Hi, I'm Alan McRobbie at Sailing Company, and today we're going to be discussing the USB to serial cables, the COM uh, U cable and the COM U13. There's a long version and a short version, as you can see here in the packages. Um, if you're watching this video, it probably means that you may have, be having some difficulty getting the cables installed, so we're going to go right to that. Okay, so what you do with this cable to install it on your PC is a little bit different than the usual USB, where in the case of the usual USB, you have to install all the drivers first and then plug the cable in or plug the device in like a printer or something that you're working with. In this case, what you do is you put the little mini CD-ROM uh, that's in here into the CD drive and then close the drive and then and then attach your cable to your computer like this. When the cable enumerates, then it's going to look for the drivers and find them and install itself pretty much automatically. And so that's, that's the hang-up that most people have. They're looking for something to do when there isn't really much to do at all. So when the, when the cable goes through its installation, the thing to do first is to check it in Device Manager on your computer. Now on my computer here, I've got Device Manager open, and I want to no you to notice a couple of things about the cable. It installs in two places. One is the USB serial COM port itself, which is the, you know, the DB9 part of it. And the other part of it is the USB connection itself, which is found under Universal Serial Bus Controllers at the bottom down here. Starting at the bottom, you can see we have the USB serial converter right here. And then the other part of it is that we have the USB serial COM port right up here as well. And so if the cable installs correctly, it will appear in both of these places. Now, if it doesn't install correctly, then one of the things that you would have to do is locate on Device Manager where this cable is appearing and then right click on that instance in Device Manager and then choose Update Driver Software right here, as you can see. That's one of your options. Then what you need to do is simply point the new hardware found wizard or the Update Driver Software wizard to the location in the, the PC where the CD-ROM is, and then it'll take it from there. Now let's assume now that everything is, is installed correctly. The next part of the process is you have to uh, you have to set up the serial framing to work with your uh, target device, your application that you're working with out, you know, in front of you. It may be um, a piece of uh, equipment of some kind. It's maybe you're using a software application called Digital Wrench or something like that, and you're trying to communicate with a device uh, that's at the other end of the cable. What you need to do is make sure that the application running on your PC has its COM port settings that match the COM port settings of the new cable. So let's look and see how you do that. What you do is you right click again on your USB serial port, COM, and you choose properties here. And you'll see that we have another uh, window that's come up and there's a tab here called port settings. And when you click on port settings, you get a number of choices here, which is uh, just known as your serial framing. It, con it consists of your bits per second, data bits, parity, stop bits, and flow control. And this needs to be set up so that it agrees with whatever the PC application is that you're running requires. And whatever that is, check the manual for that, uh, that product and make sure that these settings are exactly like what the settings are shown in the book or in your manual. The other thing that you may need to do is set the COM port number. Some PC applications have only have a limited number of choices for this, say COM 1, 2, or 3. And depending on what else has been attached to your computer in the past, this cable may install as COM 4, 5, or 6, or some other number that the PC application doesn't have. So to change that, you will click the advanced button here and another window will come up and it'll say advanced settings. And at the very top, you can see here that you can change your COM port number and click on that. 
click one regardless of whether it says it's in use or not. If it's not in use and you know it's not in use, you can choose that one. It doesn't matter. The machine may complain, but go on anyway. I'm going to leave this at COM2. Um, and then when you're done with all that, just simply hit OK. And, um, and you can go from there. All right, so I've got, uh, I've got a little test program here, which is interesting because it allows me to see both the outgoing and incoming data. Uh, and I'm using a loopback connector here. So I can click on this and see that my data is outgoing in blue and coming back in red and that everything is working properly. So that's a, an, a cable that's installed correctly. And you can see over here that here's my serial framing. This is like your PC application here. It needs to have COM2 or the right COM number. It needs to have the right serial framing there. When everything is set up properly, the units should talk. Um, one other thing I just wanted to mention is you can see here I've got this uh, COM port cable here attached to an extension. You can extend the cable up to about six feet. That's the longest that we recommend. So if you need a little bit longer cable than either one of these, um, you can add another six foot. And we have those cables in stock too. If you have any other questions or come upon a really difficult situation, you can give us a call and we'll be glad to help you through it. Um, we've uh, had many years of experience with these kind of cables. They all have the FTDI chip inside them for doing this and they've been very reliable. So we hope you enjoy using the cable and thanks for watching.